Welcome to Netlytics online tutorial on the dataset home screen. The following segment will cover the main features on your Netlytic data home screen including upgrading your account, information about your datasets and creating subsets, sharing datasets with colleagues, accessing the initial search query, as well as downloading and permanently deleting datasets. Begin by logging into Netlytic and navigate to the My Datasets home screen. If this is your first time using Netlytic, please see our introductory tutorial which walks through how to create an account. Near the top of your screen, you'll be shown how many datasets you currently are using and how many you can create. Netlytic has three types of accounts which will determine how many datasets you can create and how much data can be imported. When you initially sign up, you'll be given a Tier 1 account. This means you can create up to three datasets and have a maximum of 2,500 records per dataset. To request additional dataset access, click the Get More link and fill out a simple form to tell us about your project. You can also access this form by clicking the My Account button in the navigation bar at the top. On this page, you can also change your password and link to a Twitter and Instagram account. The Tier 2 accounts are also part of a free tier, and upgrade requests are usually approved within 24 hours. Once approved, you will be able to create up to 5 datasets and have a maximum of 10,000 records per dataset. If you like this project and find it useful for your research, please consider supporting Netlytic by upgrading to Tier 3, our community-supported tier that has a minimal fee to support our digital infrastructure and development. With a Tier 3 account, you can store up to 100 datasets with up to 300,000 records each. You will also have access to explore your dataset using Kibana, a popular text analytic dashboard powered by Elasticsearch. Once you log into Netlytic, your home screen will list the datasets you've imported as well as any shared with you by other Netlytic users. It is important to know that only the datasets you create count towards the total number that your count will permit. For instance, here I have a Tier 3 account, which will allow me to create 100 datasets. I've already created 28, but if we scroll down below, I have another dozen shared with me. Only the ones I've created count towards the maximum number of datasets I'm allowed. This is the same for Tier 1 and Tier 2 accounts. Now let's take a look at the information that Lytic provides about each dataset from our home screen. The first column indicates the status of your dataset and one of two symbols will appear. The green status will indicates that data collection is still in progress. When the collection period has ended, a green check mark will appear. As we discuss in our text and network analysis tutorial, you can edit and analyze datasets either while they are still collecting, also known as active, or after data collection has ended, also known as static. The data collection period is determined when you start the import process. If this column remains blank, this indicates a one-time collection period. This will happen for any imports from YouTube or a text file. The second column displays an icon associated with the import source. There are a total of seven sources Netlytic can import from, and they include Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, cloud storage, text files, and RSS feeds. The third column displays the title of the dataset assigned by the user during the import process. By clicking on the title, you can access all the records imported and begin text and network analysis or make edits to the search query at any time. The fourth column indicates the time and date of the last modification to your dataset. If in this space you see the message, no data or still collecting, please check later, and the message has not gone away for more than 12 hours, something may have gone wrong with the query. By clicking on any of the column headers, you can sort your datasets based on import source, dataset names listed alphabetically, or by date modification, which will list the most recent first. When working with large amounts of data, it can be handy to work with smaller sections. By creating subsets, you can view a network's progress and growth over the collection period. We can create subsets in three ways. You can click on the date and timestamp, or you can click on the scissor icon. Either route will walk you through the same process. A new window will open and ask you to filter the data based on a date range. Once you've selected the appropriate dates, click Select and close the window. 
the new subset will now appear directly under the main dataset. The third way is if you have a dataset with over 10,000 records. The scissor icon will appear in both the text and network analysis tabs, and here you can follow the same process. Another great benefit of using Netlytic is the ability to easily collaborate with colleagues by sharing datasets. This will allow each user to make edits to the text and network analysis portions of the datasets. However, only the original creator can make edits to the search query. To share your dataset, click on the callout icon and enter the email address of the individuals you'd like to share it with. Please note that you must enter the email address of a registered user. The dataset is being shared between Netlytic accounts, not an email inbox. The next icon gives you easy access to edit your dataset collection, including the initial search query, title, and the duration of the collection period. You can also download your dataset by exporting it as a CSV file. Finally, the garbage icon allows you to permanently delete your dataset. Thanks for watching. For more information on how to use Netlytic, please visit our YouTube channel. Documentation can also be found at our website at netlytic.org.